Hey, question, has this happened to you yet? Puberty. Nah, nah, well, well actually, no, kind of. Like, uh, you know when you spent your moody teens watching Cyberpunk and you thought, yeah, that's the future right around the corner. And then one day you actually did walk around the corner of the city, or should I say, Chinatown. Chinatown. I mean, I know Chinatown is in the city, but everything's a neon Korean or Mandarin. There's ads for electric cars everywhere because millennials are now in charge of marketing and design. They now actually look like those flying cars from those movies. So, friendly Geordies deems it. And you know how there's always one terrifying company in the middle of the city? Ours in Sydney has this, it's called Memo Corp. Is there a scarier name for a corporation? Like, I don't know what they do in there, I don't want to know, but I do know that the chick that invents robots' memories is trapped in the development wing of it. Look, we're so far in the future, you even go to a robot for your veterinary advice these days. Let me know in the comments when you had that moment, but mine was, I saw this ad projected on the side of a skyscraper in the CBD and it said, I swear to God, it's a felony to fly drones in the city center. Come on, like it's at that moment I thought, fuck, it's happened. I mean, cigarettes smell like mangoes now. How has it not happened? It would be remiss of me to say, the future is brow. We, we, we say brow instead of now in the future. So uh, anyway, now that, we're, now that we're in the future, you know, when you watch those movies and you thought, yeah, that was great. I just, I just wish it was like 30 minutes less of Ryan Gosling looking sad. Like, I'm glad that most of the film is that, but I would like to know a little bit more about how this world functions. Well, now that we're here, we can with Robo Debt 2016. All right, that, that's enough of that. If we play any more of that song, we'll have to pay for it. There's a Ryan Gosling in this Robo Debt story. His name is Bill Shorten. And just in case you're wondering what Robo Debt is, we're not going to explain it, look it up in your own time. Ooh, jokes, just kidding, here it is. Robo-debt was a scheme that the Liberals cooked up where they essentially got a robot to chase up debts from welfare cheats, which before we go into the specifics of that, you've done self-checkout at the supermarket, right? How many times out of 10 have you made this exact sound when you're using it? You ready? Attendant needed. Now imagine if instead of giving that program the task of trying to distinguish between a plum and a carrot, it was given the much more complicated task of trying to distinguish between someone with a bad back and someone faking having a bad back to get workers' compensation. Now before we get into the negatives of that, pros did prove Henry Bergson's theory of humour that the mechanical being encrusted on the living does lead to a comedy of errors. Because you know all the movies we were just talking about? What is the moral of every one of them? Robots take over, and then they start killing people. Every time. And then as soon as we get to real life, look at this. Up to 2,000 dead. 2,000. Why? Because then, imagine on top of you got rid of the person next to the checkout machine where you can go, Attendant needed. Uh, uh. God, we're useless, aren't we? No one was looking over it. The supervisor in charge of social services was that. How unsocial is that? Of course, Rob the robot was going to cause housing insecurity. Look at him go. If you wanted to, as the kids would say, speak to the manager, imagine if the manager was this revolving door of Australia's most recognizable psychos, including Mr. Snee, which for foreign viewers, if the RoboDebt program itself learned empathy and started feeling sorry for some of the targets, I would find that more believable because, oh yeah, no, no, I think Ghost in the Shell, yeah, no, I get how that could happen. Scott Morrison, our former prime minister, had to spend 190,000 tax dollars on someone teaching him how to feign being empathetic. It's like we put Logan Paul in charge of single mums and blind people. And he did exactly what Logan would have done too. He automated it into some income stream so he could take more holidays. At least Captain Stu's here made a bit more sense as head of social services as we all know he'd be interested in the single mums. Then you had all these nothings like the human pumpkin and the Canberra Casanova himself, Alan Tudge. The irony 
of Alan Tudge cracking down on the tax leashes when the taxpayer had to cough up $650,000 to settle a tiff between him and a former staffer of his that were having an affair. Maybe it is better if billionaires run our society because at least then they'd spend their own money on NDAs. Now what's particularly interesting about Tudge is well, that's pretty much it, the affair. But also, he was the fall guy for the most hectic part of the robo-debt scheme because after years of shorten probing into this scandal, his hard work finally started to pay off. It finally started to gain some traction. Now, at that point, a normal government would realise, oh, we are now in that awkward period between AI art being pretty good and Terminator. Time to override the autopilot and put the human back in human services. But just remember, Scott Morrison isn't normal. He saw it, like he saw all governing challenges, a PR opportunity. Where the Liberals started to realise the scope of what would later be described by a federal judge as a shameful chapter in the administration of the Commonwealth social security system and a massive failure of public administration. The Liberals did to try and fix it, no. They increased the number of robo-debt mail-outs from 20,000 a year to 20,000 a week. Now the reason that is good PR is because, as we all know, it's a good look to go after welfare cheats. Is be honest with yourself, if you have a problem with that, I'm sure you're already used to this phrase, you ready? Get in line. And come on, as soon as you start paying more tax than you had to and you report a temp job of eight bucks a year, you start thinking, fuck you, if I have to work, if you can't afford a flight back to New Zealand, let's legalise cannon shooting. BAM! And they said Kiwis were a flightless bird. If you survive the landing, like and subscribe! Scribe was a New Zealand rapper that Australia was briefly infatuated with in the mid-2000s, I think. It was kind of like how Americans were obsessed with Crocodile Dundee, so I... I, look, I get it, okay? I get that it's a niche reference. I also get the bloodlust. The problem is, the vast majority of people in this country that are on welfare do sit on their ass, but they're sitting on their ass because they're quadriplegics. Pitchers, AKA the who's who of the Coles casual staff list. They work where they can in infrequent employment and the robo debt machine. How unsophisticated is this? We really haven't gone that far since the Pong days, have we? It just assumed that all these people were working as much as they were over Christmas for the entire year. And so it invented these phantom debts, sent these letters out, and even worse, even worse. For the people that are in the know, this is how they explained it to me. Those who were hassled by the debt collectors were the ones that actually responded to the letters. Who do you think responded? Because I can tell you from personal experience, it certainly wasn't the welfare cheats. They don't even respond to their fucking names. They didn't even have an address to send the letter to. No, it was the people that actually needed the payments and because some of them are intellectually handicapped, they didn't understand the situation, they were kicked off their payments, hassled for a huge debt they didn't owe, nor could they pay it back, nor was there anyone to talk to, and so they started to kill themselves. That's what RoboDebt did. That's what the repeated dereliction of duty that this long list of Liberal ministers let happen who willfully abdicated their responsibility to a checkout machine so they could check out of their current jobs and focus on personal advancement and all the stories you saw in the press about it successfully prosecuting welfare cheats. Guess who actually caught those? Old, outdated humans, eh? Ah, not so useless after all. People who actually have a brain so they can pick up on little patterns like that guy's wearing a tie-dye shirt. <coughs> See, now he's getting hung out to dry. How ironic. You should see the speech of Shorten's making a question time about it, because just so you know, US viewers, you know how everyone freaked out when the Republicans started heckling Biden? <laughs> this cartoon sums up our parliament. Mr. Speaker, 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 Mr.
And so he just gets up every day to read out their testimony, day in, day out. And you should see the Liberals squirming in their seats and trying to avoid eye contact. And you know why? Because they know they're fucked. They know people are going to face jail time over this. And that is because Bill Shorten is what competence looks like in office. That's a man that puts your tax dollars to work as he stoically spent years of his life grinding it out, evidence collection, following up robo-debt victims, gathering legal arguments, and also got the chance to get a royal commission on the case. How good's that? Giving the Liberals back a little bit of what they fucking gave him only this time, but was it a waste of taxpayer money? What's a royal commission I hear US viewers ask? Well, they're sort of like senatorial hearings, but I think they're all the proof you need that you should have been more subservient and cowardly like us in Canada, America. Like, don't get me wrong, I do like the aesthetic of you guys having to answer to some southern dandy with the accent of Colonel Sanders and the demeanor and wit of a landowning, aristocratic, homosexual. That's cool, but there's just something so charming that in this day and age you still have to put your hand on the Anglican Bible. Do you swear not to lie to the King of England? There's a portrait of King Charles looking over the proceedings, looking sternly like... Mm. The big bombshell of the Royal Commission. How's this for a topper? Not only was robo-debt illegal, hence the jail time, the Liberals knew it was illegal, which means... Oh jail time. Classic pattern of the Liberals in power. Talk to any bureaucrat, any public servant that brought this minor inconvenience to a minister's attention that the federal government was committing actual crimes, they were fired! While those that told the minister what they wanted to hear, promoted. Anyway, just wanted to make this video to point out while the Liberals pretend to be the party of government efficiency, that's what true government efficiency looks like. Robo-debt court, fuck all welfare cheats, basically was a disabled person harassment machine and cost us over $700 million. It is goddamn vital to give people like Shorten commendation for his public service because could you imagine if someone that intelligent, that competent, that focused was in the private sector. How big do you think that guy's bonuses would be for saving a company $700 million? Instead, he chose a life of getting hammered in the press daily because he dared cap two Liberal Prime Ministers, brought back Labor from oblivion, created the NDIS, which is the most significant government program since Medicare, and how's this? Took down Skynet in his spare time. God, we got our money's value out of Shorten. Yes, I still do positive videos sometimes. Like and subscribe. Now remember, scribe was a New Zealand...